Hello and welcome back everybody. Today we are going to be going over five very strong builds for the engineer and this time we are not going to be taking any overclocks. So let's just hop right into it and first build we're going to go over the primary weapon, secondary weapon, and the equipment. So this first build is going to be a little bit longer than the other ones. Now for our very first build we're going to be taking the Warthog Auto Shotgun as our primary weapon and then we're going to be taking the Shard Diffractor as our secondary weapon. This one is a very straightforward build. We're going to be using the shotgun at very close range to clear off basically everything that gets close to us and we're going to be using the shard diffractor at very long range that's all that we're going to need to do with this particular build now the way that i have the shotgun set up is like this in tier one i have increased rate of fire i like this over the increased mag size you could go with the extra mag size if you really like that one but i find rate of fire really helps the shotgun out it makes it feel a lot better at close range in tier two i'm going with the extra ammo extra ammo is very useful for the shotgun because you can run through ammo with it pretty quick in tier three i'm going with larger magazines this just makes it so we go from six rounds up to eight rounds very useful you could pick anything in this tier though, especially if you chose the uh, magazine size in tier one, you could go with the recoil reduction or the faster reload. Both of those are really good. The shotgun does make really good use of reload canceling too. So be sure to try that out. It can make it so you can get back into the fight much quicker than you normally would with the shotgun. In tier four, I'm going with larger pellets. This will give us extra damage. So we go from seven damage per pellet up to eight damage and we are firing out uh, eight pellets. So that is a nice little buff in damage overall. You could go with armor breaking here, but armor breaking for the shotgun generally doesn't help too much it does against rollers and it can against guards kind of against praetorians too but that's about it usually more damage will let you consistently one shot headshot the uh grunts on the higher difficulties because the shotgun can do that on any difficulty assuming you get good pellet spread and then in tier five we're going with minor adjustments to get us a faster rate of fire this is just so you can hold down the shotgun and spray it into big enemies i like this a lot if you don't like this though you could go with turret whip turret whip is a really good option too it lets you have a really high burst damage uh, if you shoot your turrets with your shotgun, they'll just fire out a powerful shot at whatever they're aiming at. This can do pretty high friendly fire damage though too, so be careful of that. For our secondary with the Shard Diffractor, we are running it like this. So we're going with extra ammo in Tier 1. This just helps out with the Shard Diffractor overall, lets you have about two more magazines worth of shots. In Tier 2, we're going with increased weak spot damage. So if we are hitting something in the weak spot, we do 33% more damage to it. Very nice for hitting big things like Dreadnoughts or Praetorians, Oppressors, whatever it might be. Tier 3, we're going with a faster recharge time so we have less downtime overall you could go with the larger mag size though this one's pretty interchangeable i like both of them i just like this one a little bit more tier four we're going with the armor breaking uh, this is just to hit bigger enemies like praetorians and just strip the armor off of them quickly if we need to you can also do it for the twins if you don't find that that's super necessary and you want it for more crowd control or you want it for the elemental status effect, you could go with the fire here. The Shard Defractor can light things on fire regardless, but if you go with the fire in Tier 4, you can light them on fire much faster than you normally would. And then in Tier 5, we're going with the Dazzler module. This slows down enemies that we are shooting at. This can be pretty useful for the team, especially if we're hitting something big like an oppressor or a detonator. It'll slow them down a little bit so teammates can potentially get further away from it. So let's go over equipment now, starting with the platform gun. And the platform gun can kind of be built however you'd like. It really doesn't matter how you want to build it. It's going to be useful regardless. So first up in tier one, we have increased rate of fire. This one's really not necessary. The simple reason is that you can pickaxe cancel your platform gun if you want to. So you can fire it out swing your pickaxe, bring it back up, and you can fire it again. And that's basically instantly. It's even faster than just having the increased rate of fire. Usually I go with extra ammo in tier one just so that I can have more platforms overall. Uh, the other one is larger magazine. So you go from holding four to holding eight shots in the gun. I would recommend one of those two over the fast rate of fire, but even the faster rate of fire isn't particularly a bad one if you don't want to be bothered to do that. Tier two, we're gonna take our only option, which is the Plastic Reap Mark II. This makes it so we have shock absorption from falling and so do all teammates. You can potentially shoot this down and cushion some of the impact from the fall. You're not going to be able to cushion all of it if you're falling really fast or from a really high area, but it still might be enough for you not to go down. So it's very useful. And then in tier three, you can pick whatever you like. I like the repelled in additive. This makes it so enemies will avoid walking over your plastic whenever possible. Now, if you're standing on top of the plastic that's not going to make it so they have to just stand on the outside of it. They still will try to climb up and hit you, but they will try to take the shortest route if the route allows them to. So if, for example, you had maybe three lines of plascrete, the bug would probably try to go around and get you from there rather than just walk across it. Unless you're standing right next to it, then they'll probably just cross it because the amount of distance just doesn't really matter to them. But if you are standing a little bit further back, the bugs will likely try to go around the plascrete 
Repel the native is a little bit weird, but once you get used to it, it's not so bad. If you don't want to deal with that, you could just go with extra ammo. Extra ammo is really nice too, just having more platforms overall. And our other tier three option would be the disabled inertia. Try this one out. See if you have fun with it. It's kind of more of a fun mod than anything else. <laughs> Moving on to our turrets. You can build the turrets kind of however you'd like to. I have a specific video talking about one or two turrets as to which ones I think are better. Generally, I would say two turrets are better if you're okay with managing turrets. If you don't care about managing turrets whatsoever and you just want to have a turret and set it down, then one turret is better for you. It all just depends on how much you want to micromanage your stuff. So for this, I'm going with two turrets, but again, if you don't want to manage two turrets, just go with one turret. In tier two, I like going with a quick deploy. This makes it substantially faster to build your turrets. <laughs> it's only a two second build then rather than a four second build. I, I like the quick deploy. I think it's a bit better than the ammo or the magazine, but if you don't mind it, and especially if you're running one turret, you could just go with extra ammo or go with the fast refills. Both of them are fine then. In tier three, I usually go with the stun, but armor breaking is really good on this too. The extra magazine capacity I find to be the least useful here. I think the other two are better options for either the one or two turrets with the exception of maybe you just want to set one turret down and wait for it to completely run out of bullets and then expanded ammo bag is okay. And then in tier four, I do like going with the defender system. This will get you more damage. You do have to kind of angle your turrets because then your turrets won't just shoot everything around them. They will just shoot in a cone. But if you set it up against a wall, it's usually not a big deal because the turret's back is against the wall and it is likely covering the majority of the area. You could go with Hawkeye system. That one's okay too. It makes it so you can ping stuff. And if you're taking turret whip, it's honestly not too bad. You ping something big like a Praetorian, your turret will try to shoot at it, and then you can shoot the turret, and your turret whip will then hit it. So it can have some synergies if you want to take turret whip with a shotgun. For the suit, I'm running my usual build for the suit, but just like in all of these, be sure to buy everything with the suit. If you buy all of them, you will get more health overall, because every so many upgrades uh, just unlocks for the suit, you will get extra health. For this, I'm running bigger mineral bag. You can take whatever you want in tier one. They're all pretty good, but I like the bigger mineral bag just to carry around more stuff. In tier two, I like going with healthy because it makes it so you can soak up a little bit more damage on the higher difficulties, which is generally what these builds are going for, going for has four and has five. Tier three, we have the hazmat system for engineer, which is your only choice. So just take that one. Makes so you take a little bit less damage from poison, which is probably the least useful out of the just armor bonuses. It's not terrible or anything because you can take reduced damage from the death clouds from the Praetorians or the oppressors from the mushrooms and the fungus bog. You kind of do from acid spitters, but not the direct hit, just the damage over time. There's not as many things that are poison in this game as some of the other resistances, or they're not as common as something like uh, Scout's fall damage reduction, which you're probably going to be falling pretty often. And then in tier four, I like going with breathing room. This gives you three more seconds of invulnerability once you get res. So you go from having three seconds of invulnerability to having six seconds. That is more than enough time to res somebody else. It's also enough time to get a resupply, especially if you're running resupplier. I guess now would be a really good time to go over perks for engineer. Generally, I stick with the same handful of perks with engineer, regardless of build they can be switched around though for passive perks i generally go with thorns to keep little things off me this can be pretty useful because it's annoying to get swarmed by jellyfish or swarmers and besides engineers secondaries slash their turrets they don't always have a best way of getting rid of these bugs quickly uh, if you're well set up then they can clear up a whole horde no problem but if they just all swarm you at once it is kind of nice to have thorns to get rid of a couple of them while you try to get away from that situation. I also like going with resupplier. Resupplier is such a nice quality of life perk overall. It lets you get resupplies back faster, lets you get more health from those resupplies, and it gives you born ready so it will reload your guns. This will include your shotgun and your platform gun with this build. It won't include the shard diffractor, but that's okay. I also do run born ready pretty often with engineer, and I usually don't swap that out unless I'm taking the shard diffractor because it's not really necessary then. Shard diffractor doesn't need to reload, but if you are taking the uh, grenade launch, launcher or the breach cutter i would recommend taking it just because it's super convenient to reload those ones you could take vampire if you plan on just using your power attack pretty often to keep your health up or if you want to take iron will as an active perk and you could also take sweet tooth that will just get you more health and a little bit more movement speed when getting red sugar for active perks you have some really good options here uh, the primary one that i would recommend taking with engineer would be dash dash is super useful in engineer because you don't really have much mobility with engineer you have really good ways of controlling an area, but if you need to leave the area or you need to kite around, you don't have a great way of doing that. Dash lets you have a great way of doing that. Beyond that, I really like taking a Steve, so I take Beastmaster pretty often with Engineer. 
This just lets me have a Steve so I can have that. I could have my turrets and then I likely have some sort of grenade, either the decoys or like the swarmer drones where I can just throw them out and control an area better. Even the plasma bursters or the proximity mines also work really well with this kind of concept of having multiple little minions that go out and attack. So I like having a Steve for them. If you don't like that though, there are still some good options, especially in multiplayer. Iron Will is great for clutch moments and Filled Medic is really good in a team setting as well because you can res people faster and you get an insta res every mission. So super useful there. Berserker, another great option for active perks because then you can have really high burst damage for single targets or even for crowds. Engineer can run through bullets fairly fast. You do a lot of damage with that, but having Berserker can make it so you can clear up a crowd by yourself just with your pickaxe and not use as many bullets too. That also helps, especially if you're running uh, decoys. If you're running decoys, it's really useful because you can just chuck those out. Uh, everything goes for that and then you just keep smashing everything around it with your pickaxe. And let's talk about throwables now too with NG. Your throwables are really good overall with Engineer, I would say. They are a little bit different than the other classes though. They all have some sort of kind of odd function. Lures are your first option, you throw them out. They just create a decoy, enemies go and attack them. You can have up to nine or 10 enemies attacking a decoy at once. Once the decoy is destroyed, it does do a little bit of electricity damage to everything around it. So it will kill swarmers or jellyfish that were on it, but it won't kill big things like grunts if unless they're at really low health very useful though it's also really good for just getting reses so that one's a pretty nice grenade plasma bursters are your probably most offensive grenade you throw these out they bounce around they do high damage these can be a little bit tricky to get used to though because they can bounce right back and hit you and they're very easy to hit teammates by accident with so once you get the hang of them though, they can clear up entire crowds of grunts just by themselves. Proximity mines, be sure to put away from objectives, but you wanna be using them around objectives that you wanna hold. You can use these on escort missions or salvage missions, put them outside of your direct area where you're trying to defend, whether that be Doretta or like a black box, put them outside of that where you think bugs are gonna be coming in and then they'll go off doing high damage. Alternatively, you could cluster them all up in one group on something like a dreadnought mission and have the dreadnought walk across them they will do really high damage there too. Um, you can also pick up your proxy mines, which is pretty nice if they didn't go off. <laughs> and then your most recent grenade, the SSG throws out a bunch of swarmer drones. This one's super simple. You throw it at your feet or throw it at the enemies and then swarmer drones come out and attack anything that's nearby. Super simple, but also really strong. All right, now moving on to the second build for Engineer that I recommend, we're going with Stubby as our primary weapon, and we're just going the full two build. This is all electricity Stubby, so we're going with extra electricity chance in tier one. This makes it so we can just trigger our electricity more often. Going with recoil reduction in tier two, but honestly in tier two, any of these are fine. I don't find Stubby as that much recoil, but if you just want very minimal <laughs> recoil, going with the extra recoil reduction is pretty nice. Um, usually I'll go with the larger mag size here, but I do usually recommend just straight two build for anybody trying to get used to stubby right away. Tier three, I like going with extra ammunition. You could go with more damage, but stubby doesn't really need damage, especially since a lot of our damage is gonna be coming from the electricity. So just more shots will generally help. Tier four, we go with conductive bullets. So we do more damage when something is already electrocuted. Very nice. And then in tier five, we go with electric arc where there's a chance of spreading electricity to multiple enemies. That one's pretty nice too. It just makes it so we can clear up crowds. Stubby is not necessarily going to kill anything super quick, but it is going to be pretty reliable for dealing crowd damage, dealing status effects, and getting us a little bit more uh, DPS overall on most enemies. And then we're gonna be taking the Breach Cutter as our secondary weapon to complement this even more. Breach Cutter hits like an absolute truck. The main downside of the Breach Cutter though is that it kind of has a slow reload, which isn't a big deal if you're running Born Ready, which I would recommend and it doesn't hold a whole bunch of shots. We're gonna build for that, but we can still run through ammo with it really quick. So for this in tier one, I go with the larger mag size. This goes from three shots up to six shots. So we can potentially just spam this right through enemies and deal even more damage or shoot through crowds and do even more damage because we just have more shots. Uh, tier two, we're going to the extra ammo. Six more rounds for the breach cutter is really nice. Tier three, we're going with the quick deploy. There's no real reason for us to go with reload speed in this tier, just because we're already gonna be running born ready with this, uh, at least I am, and I'm never really going to be actively reloading the breach cutter anyway. Tier four, you could go with armor breaking, but I'm gonna go with the stun. If you hit something, you stun something for three seconds, and it's really easy to hit stuff with the breach cutter. This is great for hitting Praetorians. And then in tier five, I go with plasma trail, although you could go with triple line split. Triple line split is a really good one to start out with too. Plasma trail will get you more damage overall, and it gets you a little bit more DPS. So it can kind of help if swarmers move in there, or if you hit a Praetorian and it's not quite dead, you can wait for the plasma trail to kind of kill it. If you're having trouble hitting enemies or you want to be able to hit 
more enemies effectively than take triple line split. That one's a pretty good option. It makes it so you have three breach cutter shots, but these three breach cutter shots are not triple the damage. Otherwise, this would be completely ridiculous. It just effectively increases your chance to hit. So it can be pretty useful for certain enemies, especially flying enemies. Generally, you just want to be using the breach cutter at close to medium range against larger enemies or large crowds of enemies, dealing really high damage to them, and then use stubby to clear up basically everything else. Stubby can still work kind of well at longer ranges, but this build is going to struggle at really long ranges because you just don't have a great option there. For our third build, we're going to be taking the Loki Smart Rifle as our primary weapon. And I have the Loki set up like this. So we are going with extra ammo in tier one, but you could take extra damage. Both of these are pretty great options. Just depends on what you want, more sustained damage or more burst damage. In tier two, this one's really your call. Pick whichever one you like. I usually go with the longer reach overall. But if you want a wider lens to hit potentially more enemies or a more narrow lens to hit really far enemies, both of those options are pretty good too. Tier 3, I like going with the blow through rounds because we can potentially get a little bit more damage out of this. If you don't find that to be super useful, then maybe go with the increased damage when things are being electrocuted or on fire because this build will incorporate fire too, so that can work, and you could also switch around your tier five. Tier four, I like going with the faster lock-ons. This is pretty self-explanatory, just locks on a little bit quicker, super nice. And then in tier five, I go with the full damage when fully locked on. If you don't like this and you want something that's a little bit more flexible, you could go with the electricity in tier five too. That is a pretty good option. Loki's really good at dealing with things at medium to long range. Doesn't do incredibly well at close range just because of the slower rate of fire. And the lock on feature is kind of necessary for it. So just spam firing this from the hip is not that great. Now for a secondary weapon, we're going to be taking the grenade launcher. And for the grenade launcher, I have it set up like this. We're running extra ammo in tiers one and two. You can switch these around though. If you want more damage or more AOE, you could pick that. I like the extra ammo though. Makes it so we can use it more often. Tier three, I'm going with the fire damage on this so we can light enemies on fire. This is pretty good for clearing up crowds of regular grunts and it can be useful for applying status effects to other enemies. The grenade launcher also has fear on it, so that's pretty useful. Enemies will run away and if they're on fire and running away, even better. If you don't like this though, I'd recommend the higher velocity in tier three. That can be pretty good. Armor breaking does sort of work on the grenade launcher, but not exactly. It works on the direct impact of the grenade, but not the actual explosion of the grenade. So it's not as useful as it might seem. Tier four, I go with larger AOE, but all of them are pretty good in tier four. And then in tier five, I go with the spiky grenade. This is by far the most straightforward one. You just get more direct impact damage. So we can do a little bit more damage when we're hitting big things. If you're gonna be taking this on a dreadnought mission though, you probably wanna switch off the fire because you can't light dreadnoughts on fire. It's just going to be a waste of damage then. You could go with armor breaking then or with the faster velocity. Either one of those is good in tier three. We're basically just going to be using the grenade launcher for crowds to soften them up. And then we're just going to be using the Loki to clean up everything slash pick off stuff at a distance. For our fourth build, we're going to be running the Loki smart rifle as our primary weapon once again. This time we're going to be building it more for damage and more for dealing extra damage to things that are on fire or being electrocuted or both because it does work with both, which is pretty awesome. So in tier one, we're going with extra damage so we can hit a little bit harder, although you could go with extra ammo here too. Both are pretty good. In tier two, once again, it's your choice. Pick whatever you'd like. I'm going with longer reach. Tier three, we're going with the electrochemical rounds. This will give us 20% more damage when things are being electrocuted or when things are on fire or when they're both. They do stack together. So if you have something that's on fire and being electrocuted, you will do even more damage to it, which will be useful because we can light things on fire with this build. We go with the faster lock-ons in tier four, just so that we can put the locks on enemies a little bit quicker. And then we go with the electro generator in tier five. So that makes it so we can electrocute enemies with the Loki. This is really Really good for clearing up big things but we can clear up small enemies pretty quick too for the second area we're going to be taking the shard diffractor and we have this built more for an aoe build for dealing with fire damage you could also take fire grenade launcher and make this work too similar to our previous build and for this i'm running extra ammo in tier one although you could take extra aoe damage too that would be pretty good with this Tier two, we're going with a larger AOE so we can spread out more fire to more enemies if they're clustered pretty close together. Tier three, it's your choice again. Pick whatever you'd like. I like going to the faster charge, but larger mag size is good too. Tier four, we're going with the fire so we can light things on fire even quicker than we normally would. And then in tier five, you can honestly go with any of these. They're really good with this build. I'm going with the biomass converter so we have a bit more crowd control. We can clear up enemies in groups a little bit quicker. It won't do anything substantial to bigger enemies like Praetorians or Oppressors that we want to light on fire, but it will work really well against grunt swarms.
if you did want to hit uh, oppressors and praetorians and stuff even harder i would recommend going with the hydrogen rupturing in tier 5 so that we can get even more damage because you could light something on fire spray the loki at it to electrocute things switch back and forth and just keep doing really high damage with both the weapons and then for our fifth and final build we're once again going to be using the warthog auto shotgun as our primary weapon this time we're going to be setting up for a turret whip build so we can do high single target damage with it in tier one i'm going with extra rate of fire just because i really like the rate of fire but you could go with larger mag size both are good in tier two i'm going with choke this time this makes it so we have 50 percent less spread so we can hit our turret a little bit easier and we can potentially hit weak spots a little bit easier too if if you're finding that you're running through bullets though extra ammo in tier two could be really useful going with larger mag size in tier three that way we have eight shots going with more damage in tier four it's still usually better than the armor breaking for the war dog and then we are going with the turret whip in tier five so when we shoot our turret it will shoot out an explosive round that will deal really high damage to whatever it was aiming at to kind of complement this we're going to be taking the breach cutter as our secondary weapon and this time we have tier one we're going to the longer lasting beam this effectively doubles the amount of time that our beam can travel which can be really useful and we're going to be using this for crowds at close to medium range in tier two i once again would recommend going with extra ammo you don't really need more damage you don't really need a wider beam you could go with a wider beam if you want to just really make it crowd oriented but i find that the extra ammo is just really nice and hard to give up quick deploy in tier three because again i'm probably never going to be reloading this born ready can do that stun in tier four but you could go with armor breaking here too and then in tier five we are going to triple line split so that we have more of an easy time just hitting the crowd that we're going to be firing this at or hitting the big enemies that we're going to be uh, shooting this at the main downside of this particular build is that it's probably the least ammo efficient out of the ones that i have recommended so running through ammo with this is pretty possible so hopefully these builds kind of helped you out thanks everybody for watching this i really do appreciate it i hope you guys enjoyed and i will talk to you guys next time bye bye everybody